I think if you can just like develop something and make it work and then develop something else and make it work and to where they can connect and mesh together really well, which is normally basic movements and, um, you know, just make them work on everybody. And that's the easiest way to do it. And basics are something that works against everybody. That's why we do, we teach beginners that, you know, Baron Bolo doesn't always work against the guy that's 250 pounds if you're 140, you know, cause he's just going to squish you, but you know, doing something extremely basic normally does. So I always, I think the basics are really important to work on if you're first starting or even if you haven't, uh, if you've been training for a while, I think basics, regardless of how long you've been training are extremely important to develop because it is kind of like the overall, um, like base of your game and you continue to build upon that. Absolutely. Yeah, it was really well said. Yeah, there's a reason that, that it's all the foundational structure, you know, it's, it's very well said. Um, another thing you mentioned there is that you said that your first instructor had you guys drilling arm bars from closed guard. Like, I think you said a couple hundred on each side. What are your thoughts mm -hmm. on that? What are your thoughts on repetitive drilling on specific techniques? So not, not necessarily doing uh, drilling chains and flows where you go from one thing to another and back again, but more doing one specific repetition on one specific thing over and over again. I know there's some people that swear to that method. What, do you, what are your thoughts? Do you think that that really helped you? a lot or or not really yeah so i think there's like a benefit to both i think it's extremely important and i do more of it now than i did before of like chaining drilling like i'll like drill a sweep uh guard pass back take and a finish something like that and i'll drill that chain over and over again and i think that's really important but when you're like developing one movement or learning one movement or trying to refine that movement, I think it's really important just to stick with one move and rep it out over and over again, whether it be like an outside heel hook or an arm bar from close guard. It could be complicated or simple, but regardless, like you're doing it over and over and over again and hitting like a large amount of reps on it because then that increases the, the, the chance of you developing muscle memory versus just trying to think through the movement whenever you're in live. So let's say for instance, you're in close guard, and you're drilling your arm bar from close guard over and over and over again, you get 300 reps in. Then when you go to rolling, you're more likely to slap on that arm bar when their elbow kind of leaves their side versus you just drilled a few times because you're doing sequences all the time. Then when their elbow leaves their side, oh wait, arm bar, I got to block, foot on the hip, change my angle. And you, you have to think a little bit more than when you just develop that muscle memory. So that makes sense. Yeah, I like that. The, the other thing I wanted to ask you about was that you mentioned that once you ended up uh, training under Hadrugo Cabral, uh, that it changed your the way you approach your half guard. You said you went from being a, from a more traditional half guard style to the Lucas Lecce style, the Coyote half guard. If you don't mind me asking, what do you think it was about that style of half guard that was so revolutionary for, for your own game? I think it was mostly just the effectiveness of using it in Nogi because it like led into the style of passing that I was trying to develop, which was the body lock and like the smash. And it led into like taking the back, which was also something that I wasn't like extremely good at before I came to the academy. So um, I think it just kind of worked a little bit more and um, it had a little bit more like routes and branches on it versus just like a traditional style half guard. Um, I was playing a lot of lockdown when I first started. And I would just normally use it to get back to my full guard or um, change the deep half where there's not as many routes to like different like positions or exchanges of submissions through like deep half or lockdown. You know, there's a few, but there's, they're pretty much all known with like a coyote style half guard or like where you shoot for underhooks and um, use like off balances and things. You can kind of change to chain together different movements and you can even like start attacking the legs. You can hop to the back. So it just um, kind of opened my eyes to a, a guard that was a little bit more diverse. That's excellent. Yeah, and, and what you what you described there is such an important um, phase to, to 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 come to in jujitsu. Is that's that's when you learn how to connect all these pieces together. It's kind of like when you're first mm -hmm. learning jujitsu, it's like you're throwing a box of a hundred puzzle pieces, and it's like, all right, kid, figure this figure this thing out. And it's cool when you start seeing, okay, hold this whole little system over here that I've been working on is now connecting to this thing over here, and my passing is chaining into my to my back takes, and uh, my back takes are chaining into other things. And now with uh, obviously leg lock entries, as you mentioned before, is such an important thing to understand now. So it's cool. It's it's cool when you have that all come together. When do you feel like you really came into your own as far as your style goes in competition? When, when did you feel like things really started to click and you were able to flow from one set of systems to another? To be honest, kind of in 2016 when I moved to um, the gym I, I'm at now, it was just a little bit more competition based and um, I'd say a little bit higher level. So I was able to, re or, uh, it is all at higher level. That's why <laughs> I ended up switching. But um, it, it just kind of opened my eyes to like the different style of like training and 
developing movements. Like we do a lot of specific training now versus at my old gym. I just rolled a lot. Like I just would do like six to 10 rounds of class and that would be it. I would drill and then roll, drill and then roll. And now we do like I drill and then I start in that position where I started to, you know, where, where I was doing my drills and then I can just rep that out in like live, but I'm getting like multiple opportunities to start in that situation. Like if it's front headlocks that I'm drilling, then I get to start there over and over and over again and develop like that part of my game a little bit more. I think that kind of like made my game a little bit more, um, it helped me come into my game a little bit and kind of understand, oh, okay, this is how I get better. This is how I like develop position. I need to like spend time there versus just rolling. Cause a lot of times when you roll, you just get, into your like a b and c game which is just like you know okay let's say you're good at half guard you play half guard and then you know you're good at this you play this you're good at this and you play this and you don't really work a whole lot of new things because you don't get there often because you're not good at it yet but if you start like in that specific position and do specific training from there then you have more opportunity and more time in that position and it kind of forces you to get good at it versus just rolling and not finding that position too often that makes perfect sense. Yeah. Well, yeah, that actually brings us to something else I'd love to ask you about. You mentioned that you felt like the, 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 for you, that change really hit when you, when you found a, a more competitive gym and a higher level place to train. I know that obviously you train under Professor Rodrigo, you train with uh, Cody Steele and, and your brother, you guys have a really high level room that you work with. Um, for people out there listening that might feel like they're in a place that is not quite, um, not quite pushing them enough, not quite challenging themselves and that they're not getting challenged enough. Uh, and they're on the fence of whether or not it's time to move to somewhere else. What, what advice since you've done it well what's your, what's your, what advice would you give to someone that might be feeling that way i think cross training is great um even if you're comfortable in the place that you're at and you like it and you get pushed it's still i think important to cross train a little bit whether people are coming to your gym like you invite people to come train with you or you go train with other people that will kind of like open up your eyes and help you kind of see okay where you're at versus where they're at and if there's a big gap there like on either side then that's when like you know, if they're training with you and there's a big gap, like you're way better than them, they're more than likely to come train at your gym because, you know, they want to learn and get better if they're a competitor. And then vice versa, if you train with them and then, oh man, they're just way better. They're teaching me these good movements. They're spending some extra time with me after class, all this other stuff. Then you kind of get that green light to go train there. Um, I think you'll feel it. The cross training is kind of what I was doing. I, I met Cody at a tournament where he like suplexed someone on their head. And um, so, I, so, I, it sounds like, like Cody. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, total one on one Cody. But um, we started training together after that. And um, we we're just cross training at my gym. And then I went to his gym a few times. And then it just ended up to where I just slowly started going to his gym a little bit more and more because um, Professor Rodrigo was just helping me out. And um, a little bit. Of, like things I wasn't quite getting at my gym that I just liked and I kind of drew a liking to and as a competitor and okay I just need to make the switch I just kind of felt it I think once you train there you'll feel it whether you need to move on or not well said, man. I appreciate that advice. Yeah, because there's, there's a lot of people out there. There's still this weird thing in jujitsu where, and, and I, I kind of get it to a degree, with, but there's this there's this thing where people feel like they're just the worst human being ever if they switch teams. Like, like they consider themselves a traitor, or they might they're afraid they might get called a traitor and things like that. But at the end of the day, man, especially if you're a competitor, man, you really have to do what's best for you. Like you have to you have to be in the place where you're developing the best. If you want to be the considering that you want to compete at a serious level, if you want to reach like a high level in the sport, man, you've, you've got to do what's best for your development. Um, what, what are your thoughts on that for people that might be feeling, I guess, socially guilty about leaving a school? Yeah. And I feel like a coach normally, if they're a good coach and they want you to get better, they'll know when they don't have any more to give you or when the gym isn't like helping you out at all. Yeah. And they know you can get better training elsewhere. They're going to want you to go and train somewhere else. If they're you know a good coach that really wants what's best for you. Cause as a coach, cause I'm, I help coach now that I'm a black belt and I understand like, you know, what it takes for your students to get better. And sometimes that might be like switching to a different gym. So you want what's best for your students. If you're a good coach, you want them to get better. Cause that's like our goal as coaching is to see jujitsu get to another level, like whether it be an individually with a person or just as a whole. So sometimes that is moving to the next gym. So, you know, if you're, if your coach is a good coach, you'll probably recognize that before you will. You know, and if not, and you really feel that, then, you know, maybe it's time to move on and find a different coach. But most of the time, like coaches are so good nowadays, there's less of like that whole um, like crianche and like, like old, like way of thinking where, you know, you're a trader if you move on. That's like less and less now. So I think that 
especially like with the modern jujitsu coaches will kind of recognize that and you know know when to move on and especially with like all the different affiliations now it's not really changing teams maybe just like changing locations too like as a competitor you know like let's say if you're on team alliance and you're in some like small alliance gym in like austin or houston or something and you need to move on then you maybe move to like you know lucas lepreys or you, you know somewhere else it's not really like you're a trader at that point you're just searching out different training you know 